So, uh, good afternoon, my friends, and also Dr. Ken. Well, welcome back. I hope everyone enjoyed the holidays. And now, let's face the reality by continuing our presentation. Okay, today my group will talk about Chapter 5. The topic is Reading to Learn. So, I guess everyone knows that uh, one of the methods to learn a new knowledge is through reading. So, uh, by the definition of the College Success Book, Reading to learn is active reading, a process that involves much more than the mechanic of converting a set of letters into mini mini meaningful words. For example, uh, the alphabet L O V E, when we put it all together, it becomes a love. I hope I know that uh, I expect that everyone knows what's the meaning of love. Furthermore, it's a process that you will use for gathering much of the new information you get in school and in life. Um, like the word of love can be separated to a lot of meaning. Uh, we have family love, friend love, couple love, and to determine what kind of love it is, that's what new inf uh, information you get through in your school and also in life. Am I right? <laughs> okay. Next, this is the learning circle. I bet everyone has seen it uh, before in the previous chapter. So read is under the category of absorb new ideas. After uh, active reading, is a planned, deliberate set of strategy to engage with text-based material with the purpose of increasing your understanding. So in short meaning, it means that before you read any book, you have to be prepared. Plan your schedule, plan your time, plan your place, so that you can take a read of the book and have a roughly idea what the book is going to teach. Before you really put your head inside uh, to, read, to read, which it can increase your understanding. Okay, uh, next is uh, reading in high school and university. They, of course, will be a differences. So, uh, and I expect that everyone has already experienced it. So, these are... Uh, so, in high school, teachers approach you if they believe you are falling behind. However, in the university, if you need assistance, you should initiate contact with your lecturer of tutor. That's a fact, okay? So in high school, in class, the teacher will guide you and your classmate through a review of your reading and ask questions and keep the discussion moving. So uh, basically, the teacher usually was a key part of your learning through your reading. And in university, each hour uh, we spend in the classroom, I mean in the lecture, you will be expected to spend two or more additional hours studying between classes and most of the time you will be reading. So most instructors, the lecturer, do not, expand, uh, do not spend much time reviewing the reading assignment in class. Rather, they expect that you have done the assignment before coming to class and understand the material. So these are the differences between the high school and also uh, university. Uh, next. Okay, now I'm going to uh, tell you how do you learn to read. So there are four four steps of active reading are almost identical to the four phase of learning cycle. So what is active reading? Active reading is actually learning through reading the written word. So the learning cycle naturally applies through these four steps, which is preparing, reading, capturing the idea, key ideas, and reviewing. So let's look about the preparing. Preparing is actually to understand the purpose of reading the book. You need to understand the context of what are you about to read and learn to define where to invest your efforts. So, we, uh, through our textbook, there's this anatomy of textbook, which have preface of introduction, forward, author, author profile, table contents, chapter re preview of learning object, introduction, apply, practice elements, chapter summary, review, and end notes of bibliography. But most of us, we don't actually read all of them. We only read the applied practice practical ele uh, practice elements because that's where the exam will come up. So let us look uh, uh, inside this textbook feature. For the preface of introduction, this is actually a section at the beginning of the book in which the author or editor outlines its purpose and scope. It acknowledges the individuals who help to prepare the book and perhaps outline the feature of the book. From this uh, page, you can gain 
perspective of the author's point of review what the author considers important. If the preface is written with the student in mind, it will also give you the guidance on how to use the textbook and its feature. Next, this is the forward. Forward is actually a section at the beginning of the book, often written by an expert in the subject matter, endorsing the author's work and explaining why the work is significant. From, uh, from this forward, we can it will give you an idea about what makes this, the book different from other in the field. It may also provide hints as to why your instructor selected the book for your course. Next is this author profile. Author profile is actually a short biography of the author illustrating the author's credibility in the subject matter. From here, you will learn to understand the author's perspective and what the author considers important. Actually, from this uh, author profile, this is from the College Success Strategy. Uh, for, and the author's name is Bruce Baderwell. And next is the table of contents. This we uh, usually, for all of us, we will be quite familiar because it actually is the listing of all chapters in the book and in most cases, primary sections within chapters. From this table of contents, we can actually, uh, it's helpful in establish links among the text, the course's objective and the syllabus. Next, this is the chapter preview of learning objective. From this section, uh, the, this section of each chapter in which the author outlines what will cover of the chapter and what the student should expect to know or able to do at the end of the chapter. These sections are invaluable for determining what you should pay special attention to. Be sure to compare these outcomes with the objectives stated in the course syllabus. And next is the introduction. The introduction is the first paragraph of a chapter which state the chapter's objective and key themes. An introduction is also common at the beginning of primary chapter sections. It, introduction to chapters or section are must read because they give you a roadmap to the materials you are about to read, pointing you to what is truly important in the chapter or section. And next is the applied practice elements. This, uh, this is actually the exercises, activities or drills designed to let students apply their knowledge gained from the reading. Some of the features may be presented uh, from the websites designed to su supplement the text. From here, you, uh, we will be able to understand the materials inside the textbook. And if we have trouble with them, we should go back and reread this section. They also have additional benefits of improving your recall of the materials. Next is the chapter summary. This is the section, the end of a chapter that confirms key ideas presented in the chapter. This is a good idea to, uh, this is a good section to read because before you read the body of the chapter, it will help you strategize about where you should invest your reading effort. And this is the review material, a section at the end of the chapter that includes additional applied practice, exercises, review questions, and suggestions for further reading. From this re review material, we can review question, uh, the review question will help us confer confirm our understanding of the material. And last but not least, is this EndNotes and Bibliography. This is the formal citation of sources used to prepare the text. From here, we, it will help us to re infer the author's bias and also are also valuable if doing further research on the subject of a paper. So before we start to read, we should check up our attitude and we should be psyched up. We should not wait till uh, when we are tired if, uh, to only to read because then we will not absorb enough uh, all the reading materials. And also we should have critical thinking skill of questioning what the author is saying. So there's a few method that to uh, prepare our notes. And from previous chapter, we know that there's one, uh, one of the method is Cornell methods, which is writing your notes on the uh, main idea and key question on the left hand side. And uh, those keywords and ideas on the right hand side. And besides that, we also have the outline method and concept map method. This, uh, these methods helps us to read, help us to be able to uh, write the important notes and able to read when 
uh, they are, we need to revise it. So for reading, if, uh, when, uh, when we are reading, we should look for answers to the questions we wrote and we should especially pay particular attention to the first and the last line of each paragraph. We should think about the relationships among section titles, bold, bold face words and also graphics. We also uh, should skim quickly over the parts of the section that are not related to the key questions. Uh, next, I'll pass to uh, Yuan again. Okay, uh, moreover is the chapter, the key ideas. So basically, you have to write the answer to your question in your cornea notes in the right column. And then you need to define all those keywords that you found in the readings. After that, you need to reread the section with your highlighted to call out the key ideas and words and make your notes in your margins. You need to keep inside your mind. So when it comes to highlighting, less is more. Think critically before you highlight. Think what is important and what is not important. Your choices will have a big impact on what you study and learn for the course. Make it your objective to highlight to more than 10% of the text, which means not to highlight all the text in your book. So use your pencil also to make a annotation in the margin, right, to make a notes. Note when an author is quoting someone else or summarizing another person's position. Okay, after that, you need to reviewing what you read. Actually, this is a very important tool because start by answering this question, you need to ask yourself, what did I learn? And what does it mean to me? After that, you need to write a summary of what you have already uh, read. And then working from your notes, call up the answer to your question and answer each of your question. Last, if the, next, if the text has review question at the end of the chapter, answer those because it, summary, it summarizes all the important questions. Okay, the strategies for textbook reading is all those techniques. Pace yourself, schedule a reading, get yourself in the right space, avoid distraction, avoid reading fat, uh, fatigue, I don't know. read your most difficult assignments earlier, and make your reading interesting. Okay, next, I uh, expect everyone that when you read, you all surely will encounter uh, some special text of material and special situation. So uh, in Colette's success, uh, it has listed, it has listed these few types of, uh, of situation, which are mathematic text, science text, social study text, primary sources, foreigner language text, integrating reading with your family life or right reading. I will cover some of it, but not all, because uh, due to a time limit. This will teach us how to deal when we're facing this special text. So the first one is Mathematic text. You all just have to know the procedure of how to solve a math, a math, a math problem. So uh, the first step is when you, whenever you face a mathematic uh, question, do not skip over these special elements. Even though I know at first you will fail, uh, you find out very hard. You need to read the formulas and make sure you understand the formula. You need first read. After that, you need to substitute an actual number for the variables, uh, variables and work through the formula. So first is read, second is substitute, third is make the formula by applying the uh, numbers to the real life question, uh, real life situation, which means uh, the question that they give you. Lah. After that, you need to do all exercises, which means practice being perfect, within the assigned text to make sure you understand. Most importantly is you need to understand. After that, do not go on to the next section until you have ma mastered the material in the current section because it links, as you all know, that mess it links together, like one above and then bottom. And then after that, even though you, uh, you have tried all the procedure, like you read, you substitute, you make your formula, you do the exercise and you still don't understand, you need to seek help from the instructor or teaching assistant during the office hour if need to be. Okay, for the reading graphic, uh, there are some of reading graphic, which are, we have table, we have bar chart, uh, line, uh, line chart, and also pie chart. We have map, photograph, and illustration, and also one more, uh, flow chart. You all will basically count, uh, encounter with this kind of special text. So uh, another special text is uh, scientific text. So 
when you encounter scientific text, you need to look for hypothesis. Hypothesis is basically a statement, a presumption. And then using those uh, exper exper experimental uh, data to prove or disprove them. So uh, when you want to write a report or, uh, or, or notes, you need to think about the question like this. So can the experiment or observation be repeated? Will it reach the same result when you're doing the experiment? And why did this result occur? What kinds of changes will affect the result? And then next is how. How could you change the experiment design or method of observation? How will you measure your result? And lastly, what are the conclusions reached about the result? Could the same result be interpreted in a different way? So remember, when you encounter scientific text, you need to remember that can, why, how, and what. That's the question that you need to ask yourself. Next is social sciences text. Okay, uh, social sciences text is such as those for history, economics, and political science classes. So it often involves interpretation where the author's, po the author's points of view and theories are as important as the fact they present. Which means those uh, social sci sci science texts is from the author's views and also their point. And um, by that, when you read uh, the author's point and views, you need to ask yourself such the question. Why is the author, uh, the author using this argument? And is it consistent with what we're learning in class? And do you agree the, the argument? Do you agree the points of view that the author gave? And also, will someone with a different point of view dispute the argument? What key ideas will be used to support the counter arguments? So ultimately, when you encounter social uh, science texts, you need to have primary source document. So primary source documents uh, include uh, letters, diaries, newspaper reports, financial reports, lab reports, and records that provide first-hand accounts of the event, practice, of condition that you are studying, which is these are the proof, these are the evidence, and also your material. So you need to start by understanding the authors of the document and his or her agenda. After you have made all those research, then you only can judge whether the argument, I mean the point of view that the author gives is basic, is true or not true. And do you consider that the argument is biased or not biased? Because... I know because lah, continue. <laughs> okay. Next, last is online reading. So online reading, the internet... Uh, ah, the internet provides access to virtually endless number of articles on just about any subject. So you can just type any topic and anything that you, makes you feel curious and eagerly want to know the answer. The internet will straight away, uh, straight away will give you something to let you read. Okay? However, you all need to know that uh, no such thing in the world is just right for you. So the material that you simply found might not be true and also might not be the real one. So how to determine the reliability of the material. And then in college success, it teaches you how to evaluate the reliability of the material, which is <coughs> you need to look at the URL. The web address, it gives you important information about the reliability and intention of the site. Of the site. Next is you, look, you have to look at the page, the perimeter and the so-called mesh head at the top of the page, for example, Look for a tab label about us and also the biography. Those pages will give you additional background of, on the writer. Because I think the background on the writer is uh, more important because that you need to determine that the, what kind of the uh, what kind, what character of the writer that you are reading their books. And then the third one, if you need to check the quality of the information, you need to ask yourself if the information from this website is reliable of your needs. Uh, this one is very uh, common sense. La. Okay. The four is consider what others are saying about this site. It's review. The review is also a very important part because 
not only by reading la, when you want to buy something in the market or also in Lazada in anything you, firstly you have to read about the background first right you need to know the background of the seller first and also you need to know the review right so same as re when you're reading the text so you need to consider what others saying about the site and then the last you need to trust your impression about the material you need your so-called what uh, six sensor uh, ask yourself why the website uh, was written so to is the website to inform and provide data or facts to sell something or to promote a cause or to parody? Okay, uh, next I will pass it to my teammates. Okay, thanks my partners. And now let's come to a very important point. Uh, it's building your vocabulary. And as a saying says, uh, Rome was not built in one day, I think it is couldn't be better to illustrate the importance of building your vocabulary. Every word, or, or we can say every vocabulary has its own meaning and pronunciation, serving as an individual component to a whole language word. And I think only in the way we learning and absorbing new words constantly can we make words from a sentence from a sentence, make a sentence from a paragraph and make a paragraph from a, an article. And this is uh, the three elements of the language, vocabulary and uh, vocabulary pronunciation and grammar. grammar. And a language is con consists of vocabulary pronunciation and grammar and can Pair with the other two points, the vocabulary is the most fundamental and significant for it acts as a base of both of language. It connecting with the pronunciation and grammar. We can say uh, the vocabulary is the soul of our language. If we want to try to go into the reading world, the first thing we should study is uh, is then the words, the vocabularies. Uh, the pronunciation and grammar have no sense without vocabulary. So, uh, and in other words, a language system is a co collection of vocabulary in special, uh, in specific grammars. So, the first thing is the vocabulary. And we always have two long re regions, and that's to say the misunderstanding about the voc vocabulary. Mm. The first long region is we will think the vocabulary is equal to the quantity of mastered words, but it's not true because uh, you can memorize uh, very words. Uh, um, many words, but you may not uh, master them very properly. Here are some examples for people like me who speak English as a foreign language. Uh, that's to say, the English is not my first language. Uh, when somebody says, I'm under the weather, uh, it means he is not comfortable, but if you are not very uh, master in this phrase, you may get confused if you consider where it's, it's common meaning. Um, and the other example is this sentence, I didn't mean to be a pen in the ass, I'm your big sister and I'm just looking out for you. Similarly, you can easily understand every word of these sentences, but do you really understand what do you didn't mean to pay in the ass, big sister and looking out for me? So it's to say uh, the words is important, of course, but uh, which uh, what is more important is uh, you can memorize or use many phrase, uh, different sentence types, different sentence patterns and use them properly. And that's, that's, that is what 
the vocabulary really means, and not just simply the quantity of master words. And the second long region, religion, we always get stuck is uh, many students is like to pursue superb words without destination. They like to show off their vocabulary, especially some super words trying to form a simplex sentence with few complex words. Uh, like uh, just the word once, we can change it to desiderate, and the expect we can change to anticipate, the friendly we can change to applicable. So this is, we just change a word, didn't change its meaning, but it, it seems like, uh, it seems, it seems the words uh, become more superb. However, as a matter of fact, mastering some common words and using them properly are better than using some superb words unnaturally. Uh, here is an example. Uh, you can see these two sentences. She's intentionally pretending that she isn't willing to cooperate. This is a very straight translation, but you can see the other one. She's praying hard to get. It's, this sentence used very simplex word, but it can, uh, it has the same meaning from the last one. So it means we didn't need to pursue some super words. We just know the most simplex words uh, meeting and know how to how to use them in our sentence. And what I say, what I have said is, uh, is about re recognizing the importance of building your vocabulary. And now we are coming to talk about how to master techni te techniques for building your vocabulary. First is where to find new words, and the second is how to deal with new words. And about where to find new words, here is some points from the textbook. Reading, when you look up a word in the dictionary, look at the other interesting words on the same page. Solve crossword puzzles. Play word games like Scrabble, Buggle, or Pictionary. Watch movies. Listen to speeches and attend lectures. Go to comedy clubs. Have discussions with friends. Read some more. And about how to deal with new words. Uh, the best way to building your to build your vocabulary is read, and a stronger vocabulary makes it easier and make fun, and more fun to read. Be aware of your own lazy vocabulary and try to avoid lost words and expressions. Look for new words everywhere, not just in cross readings. Before you look up a word in dictionary, infer its meaning based on its context and roots. After you look up a word in the dictionary, write your own sentence using a new word. Say the word and definition out loud. Use the new word as soon as possible. All of these are the key points to deal with new words. And memorize, memorize the words, building your vocabulary uh, to help you promote your reading ability. Okay, let's work on my partner. Uh, now it's the chapter reviews. We talked about uh, readings, special texts, and the situations, vocabulary right now. Uh, I just talk against the readings. Readings like learning involves uh, circles of preparing, observing, 
recording and reviewing. Uh, encourage you will be expected to do smart trading. It's not unusual to do two or more hours of reading for every hour you spend in class. Encourage it. You are also expected to think critically about what you read. Active reading involves four steps. The first one is prepare for reading by scanning the assignment and developing questions for which you want to discover answers through your reading. And number two is read the material and uh, discover the answers to your questions. Capture the Number three is capture the uh, information by highlighting and uh, annotating the text as well as by taking effective notes. The last one is review the reading, review the reading by studying your notes, by integrating them with your class notes, and uh, by discussing the readings with classmates. Now it's a special test and uh, situations. Do all this exercise in math textbooks apply the formula to real world situations? Practice reading the illustrations. Each type of graphics materials has its own strengths or purpose. The look for statements of hypothesis and uh, experimental design when reading science texts. Histories, economics, and uh, political science texts and are heavily influenced by interruption, uh, interpretation. Think critically about what you are reading. Uh, work with uh, foreign language text requires more time and uh, more frequent breaks. Don't rely on word for word translations. If you need to read with children around, don't put off your reading until you have a large block of time. Learn to read in short periods as available. When you're reading on the internet, be extra diligent to evaluate the source of the material to decide how reliable that source may be. And the land is a vocabulary. Reading and the vocabulary development are closely mixed, are closely linked. A strong, a stronger vocabulary makes reading easier and uh, more fun. The best way to build a vocabulary is to read. And uh, look for new words everywhere, not just uh, in class. It's no unusual to do two or more hours of reading for every hour you spend in class. Encourage you. You are also expected to think critically about what you read. When you encounter a new word, follow these steps. Write it down and uh, write down the sentence in which it was used. Enforce its meaning based on the context and the words used. Look it up in a dictionary. Write your own sentence using the word. Say the word is definition and your sentence out loud. Find an opportunity to use the word within two, two days. And now it's the questions. Okay, so the first question, which are the steps for evaluating a web-based reading se selection? A. Look at the URL, the web address. B. Check the quality of the information. C. Click the first link that pops out on top and copy the information. Or D. Simply click on the link and copy the information. The answer is, oh, the answer is A and B. So uh, next is, what are the four steps of active reading? 
First is prepare, uh, one is preparing, two reading, three capturing the key ideas, four reviewing, five writing. The answer is A, uh, one, two, three, and four. So uh, this the third question, which of the following statement is correct? Chapter summary are invaluable for determining what you should pay a special attention to. Reviewing material of a textbook is a selection at the beginning of the book, often written by an expert in the subject matter endorsing the author's work and explaining why the work is significant. A uh, preface of a textbook will help you gain perspective on the author's point of view, what the author considers important, or the applied practice, practice elements question will help you confirm your question, oh sorry, uh, confirm your question, understanding of the material. The answer is C. So. Next. So which of the following is not the strategies for textbook reading? So A, pace yourself, B, get yourself in the right place, C, read the easier assignment early in the morning, and D, make your uh, reading interesting. So what's the answer? The answer is C. Read the easier assignment early in the uh, morning. It's not the strategy for uh, textbook reading. Next, what are the methods used for preparing notes to read? First, the Cornell method. Second, elim elimination method. Third, concept map method. And the last one, outline method. So which are the correct answer? And which is the correct answer? The answer is C is 1, 3, and 4. Corner method, concept map method, and outline method. So the next question is, what are the common uses of textbook graphic? We have bar chart, photograph, table, and illustration. Uh, what the answer? The answer is donkey. All of this, all of this or both is the correct answer. And that's all for us. Thank you. Okay, uh, well, let's go ahead with our uh, main topic of the, of the day, which is synergy. Um, you, we've already listened to uh, Dr. Covey's uh, definition of synergy, basically one plus one equals three. And again, as I started to talk about, uh, and as he explained, synergy is... Uh, it's not true synergy, a compromise is not synergy. Uh, so just because uh, you might uh, leave with some sort of an agreement doesn't mean that you've synergized in the process of getting that agreement. Uh, when I was in uh, a couple of decades ago, I was, uh, I'd been for years a journalist, but then I went into marketing. And uh, as a journalist, normally you don't uh, feel like it's appropriate to run for a public office. But I just decided to run for city council because I now was no longer a journalist. I was a, a marketer and had a regular job, you know, so I had, I had time in the evenings to go to city council meetings and things like that. I was a regular person again. Whereas as a journalist, my schedule was always screwed up. And, I, I, and like I say, they were in trying to be objective and covering especially government things and political activities. Uh, it was frowned on to get politically uh, involved as a journalist. So in the city council or the city where I was at, almost every week there was a negative story about uh, something related to the city council. They were, they were arguing, uh, mad at each other all the time. They're mad at other people all the time. They definitely were not synergizers. Uh, they were always having problems, and their problems were always ending up in the newspaper. Um, and so the first thing when I, when I got elected was I, uh, there was a period of time you get elected in November, and then you don't actually start office until January, so there's a period of time of, of a, a adjustment. And so during that two, two months, I began urging the, uh, the city 
manager and the other councilman, the ones that would continue serving with me, that we really we needed to have a brainstorming session. We needed to start off this new city council with some new members, including myself, uh, by going someplace and spending some time deciding what we really wanted to accomplish. What would we what would we represent? What would we do as a city council? And so um, the idea caught on and they agreed. And so we uh, uh, actually left our city. We went to another city about 100 miles away and uh, and you know, rented uh, hotel rooms for two or three days. I don't remember exactly how long it was, but I think it overlapped three days, but I don't, don't think they were all complete days. Um, and the rules of, that we kind of talked about before, the rules of, of uh, brainstorming are that you cannot uh, really criticize somebody's, in a negative way, somebody's ideas. That you accept their ideas as being honest. Uh, you may not, ultimately vote for them. We did go through kind of a voting process, a prioritization process. You might add an idea in, in when you talk, when somebody presented their ideas, you might add ideas to it. You might say, well, you know, that's an interesting idea. Could we, you know, maybe we could twist it and do this or twist it into that. So that's where the, the synergy comes in. Is now somebody comes up with an idea, now that's the one. The more than one comes from the adjustment and the and the the creativity about how to apply that idea, how to improve the idea, uh, how to implement the idea, and so forth. And so that's where the creativity and the synergy really is achieved. And so we went through that process, and ultimately, after we discussed everything and made our best arguments and so forth, uh, we we ended up. Uh, I don't remember exactly the process, but we ended up voting on the, all the ideas and uh, and coming up by by how many points each idea got, um, setting a priority. Which one number one? I think we had almost a hundred ideas. I think it was like ninety ideas that had come out of that brainstorming session, and so they were listed all the way from number one, the top one that got the most votes, all the way down to ninety, which only maybe had one vote for the person who suggested it. And so, but it was all, everybody was involved in this. Because of that, not only did we have a good list of ideas, and, and what was interesting is I was only on city council four years, and then I, um, and then, but they kept using our ideas for like another 10 years after I left council. Uh, maybe even longer than that. I, I think they may still be using our ideas. Uh, so once they, once we had done all this creativity, they really never abandoned the list. They kept building on this list and gave, continue to give the city council some focus. But it didn't only give the city council focus, it also gave the city council unity. Because before, where they were always arguing with each other and, and uh, name calling, calling each other bad names and stuff, it was because Sometimes the name calling comes when somebody's frustrated. They don't feel like they're being heard. And they finally start name calling, which they shouldn't do. But all of that ended. All of that ended, and I don't think it was, I mean, I'm kind of a peacekeeper, although I do have very strong ideas. And there, very, there were a lot of times in city council that I was the only one voting for something uh, because my ideas were very distinctive from some of the ideas of other councilmen. But nonetheless, none of us, we didn't start calling name, each other names and stuff anymore as they had before I got on council because we had all been heard. We all had a sense of priority. We all had a sense of involvement. We didn't always agree, but we didn't name call. Um, and we, we proceeded on in a very peaceful fashion. We were no longer in the newspaper uh, as you know, as having these fits and arguments and everything in council anymore. Not that we agreed. Again, we, like I said, sometimes I was the one that was totally an outlier. Somebody that's totally out of sync with the other people, uh, partly because they cared more about being reelected than I did. I didn't mind it if I did not get reelected. Uh, so I was willing to stand up to special interests and stuff that were very powerful special interests, whereas others were always, whenever a special interest show up, they, they would change their mind not because they really changed their mind, but because they didn't want to upset special interests. So 
anyway, it was an interesting experience. Um, so the, the, the process of seeking synergy by the very fact that everybody's listened to, so that goes back to habit, to habit uh, uh, five, to seek first to understand, then be understood. And as we go into seeking the third alternative, there's a series of videos that you will watch, and we may watch one or two of them today in class, but there's a series of videos, and you'll find out, again, that that is so important, so important as you're seeking synergy, is that everybody feels like they've been listened to. Um, and that is where you gain power. You gain power in the sense of the synergy. You also gain power in the sense of bringing down the defenses, bringing down the walls. Everybody, and so suddenly you can communicate better. You don't always agree, but you've been heard and you've been understood. You've been allowed to give your perspective and then if you get outvoted, you go on. Um, you accept the democratic process, but you've been heard. Uh, now, that's in city council, but in, in negotiating in business, it's the same thing. You have two companies coming together and you're trying to consider whether to one will buy out the other one or whether you're going to merge or whatever it is that you're trying to decide. But you have different perspectives, different needs, different values. And, and if, if you don't hear out everybody and understand where they're coming from, you can get into a situation where there's no positive solution out of this. But once you listen to each other, there's a the very great possibility that you can solve the problems that some see, the, the, the objections that some have. Because you've listened to each other, you can overcome the objections, not by shouting at them, but because you've listened to them and you've understood their perspective and you can now start brainstorming a solution so that their concerns can be addressed, your concerns can be addressed in a positive third alternative way, a way that neither one of you thought you know, before, you, your idea was, oh, I have to have this or I can't go on, or I have to have this and I can't go on. But maybe by talking to each other, you can both get what you want. And it's not just this way that I thought I had to get it, but they, we come up with a different way that I can get what I need. We come up with a different way that they can get what they need. And that's the, the process of synergy. Um, one of the other things that uh, another ex part of that experience of being city council uh, they all kind of, with a laugh, assigned me to be the liaison with the, with the library district. With the, uh, in America, you have a lot of, you have your city council, but you also have a lot of little government bodies. Like you have an irrigation district with an irrigation board, and all they do is work on irrigation. And, and in this case, it was a library district. The library had its own government, uh, and they ran the library system throughout the area. So their area covered uh, a very, very big area, much beyond the borders of our city. Um, but they happened to be located, their offices were in our city, but technically our city was not part of their district. Uh, our, our citizens had never voted to become legally part of their district. So even though their offices were in our city, uh, we basically bought our services from them. We paid them money every year to let our citizens use their libraries. Um, and the, the, before I got on, on the board, the city council and the library district were always, again, arguing with each other. And, and it's so bad that when they, with a laugh, assigned me to be the liaison and attend their meetings, the library board said they were in a small room and they, they made me sit outside the room. They said, here, you, we'll open the door for you. You sit outside, and we'll give you a chair out here. So they would not even let me in the same room with them. They were so, had been so upset with city council because of this, this battling all the time with them that they would not let me even sit in the same room with them. Yet I had never done anything to them. I mean, they didn't know me. I think I did know one person on, on, on their board, maybe two even. I don't remember exactly. But... But as a board overall, I had never, you know, I had never argued with them. I had never caused problems, but they were still so upset with the, the way the city had treated them that they did not even want me in the same room. And so, 
you know, I continued to, to talk to them individually and started, I started kind of brainstorming. I started listening to them. What is the problem here? You know, why are, why are you in the city fighting each other all the time? What is it we need to do to solve this? And they explained their side of the story that, you know, the city didn't want to pay them for the services. They wanted the services, but they didn't want to pay an amount that was appropriate for them to pay their employees and to buy new books and all this sort of stuff. Um, and, but the per perspective of the city council was, you know, we have a tight budget. We don't want to raise our taxes. And, you know, you're sitting here anyway. You shouldn't be charging us so much money. We, you're in our, you're, you're part of our city. I don't, they, so each had a very distinctive perspective. And a lot of it had to do with money. The city, the, the library had to survive in its money that it had, and the city didn't want to pay it very much money. The city had a tight budget. They didn't want, again, many of them were very political, and they did not want taxpayers to be upset with them with raising taxes, which if they gave the library more money, they'd have to raise taxes. So they didn't want to do that. And so they were fighting all the time. So as we started talking about it, 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 it I realized there was a solution. And the solution was for to, to take the library totally off our budget. And the way we take them off our budget is to convince our citizens to vote to become part of the district. So they pay their taxes directly to the district, not to the city, but they pay the, their, at least not for library services, they would become part of the district, they would pay taxes directly to the district, and it would bypass the city. So the politically oriented city councilmen would actually be able to lower their budget because they would not have to pay the district one penny directly. The, the citizens themselves would be paying directly to, to the district. Um, and, and also the city council or the, uh, the district, the library district wanted to build a whole new building. Now that was totally over, you know, the, the city was very uh, reluctant to get involved with that uh, because that means even more taxes to build this great big new building that uh, uh, would cost millions of dollars. Um, so I laid out the plan. We will encourage, we will go ahead and put on the ballot um, or and, and support the idea that the uh, that citizens should have a direct say in the district so they could then vote for district library district members and they would pay their taxes directly to the district and be really part of that district. They would, because they would have ownership, so to speak, in all the library services. They would be uh, members of that district. And then, once if we could get that passed, then the then the library district would propose a new library, which would add taxes, and they would try to convince the uh, their new, you know, all of their. Uh, uh, all the members of their district, all the voters in their district, to s why they should vote for a bigger and better uh, library, which was also going to be in our city. So it would actually improve our city to have this big, nice library if it were passed. And all of it worked out. The citizens, uh, everybody kept telling me, oh, you're not going to get this through the citizens. You're not going to get it through the citizens. But we had some good communicators on the library district I was a professional communicator, and so we sold the public on the idea that they should be actual members of the library district, have ownership in the library district, and, and pay their taxes directly to the library district as they, the voters, would agree to. And they voted for it, that passed, and then the district proposed this brand new big multi-million dollar library, and they kept saying, oh, this won't pass, it won't pass, it passed. It's kind of, again, go back to the shoe salesman. Oh, it won't work, it won't work, it won't work. No, they don't wear shoes here in Africa. We can't sell shoes. But if you sell it right, you can sell it. People want, they wanted, you know, better, oops. What happened here? Where did I lose? Still going here, but I'm not going there. Okay, let's. That's good. Here it's going.
Well, now you're seeing what you're done. This is what I'm saying, but this is not what you're supposed to be saying. Now, we're going to stay, keep like this, though. We'll stay in this mode I don't, so I can keep going. Um, so, um, again, it just came from brainstorming, uh, negotiating, and a, and a uh, looking for a third alternative. And so everybody, yes, the taxpayers ended up paying more taxes. The city was not blamed for it because the citizens voted themselves to become members of that library district and to have ownership and direct say in the, in the processes of the district. And they were convinced then to go ahead and support a new library, which was better for everybody. Um, you see that we have some stuff here that not really part of this. Uh, I must have just incorporated into uh, another PowerPoint. So I'll put this down on top of that. It doesn't relate. Um, okay, so let's. Uh, anyway, Dr. Covey says that putting habits four, five, and six together, you have a perfect model for human interaction. Put simply, first be mentally committed to the idea that a solution that will benefit all parties may be constructed. Next, invest the necessary time and effort to really understand the other party and do that first. Finally, creative, create, creatively brainstorm a synergistic solution, a natural product of mutual understanding and respect. That's what it's all about. That is a, a, an excellent summary of it. That's exactly what I experienced in city council. And, and uh, they, they have lots of other examples as you go into these videos of how that succeeds. Uh, we already watched this video going on um, finding a synergistic solution means finding a solution which is better than either party might, might uh, first uh, propose. Uh, looks like there's a word missing there. But anyway, uh, so it's not one plus one. It's not add your ideas to my ideas, but I have my ideas, you have your ideas, now let's find better ideas because we are creative people. We are people who can uh, go beyond, can keep going, can keep growing, can keep coming, can keep inventing, uh, can keep being creative. And so together we can come up with something better than either one of us could have done by ourselves. Uh, such a solution can only be found if both parties truly understand the other party's position, the fruit of habits four and five. Um, I'm going to skip this, but you see what these guys, have you seen this done before in reality? I was going to have you guys come up and do it and demonstrate it to us. Um, but, you know, I, I, I sometimes, shall we do it? I need four guys to come up here and do this. Who wants to come? Well, maybe I need four guys, four, four volunteers. We'll take the time to do it. Hey, maybe this team that just presented can come up and help us with this. Come on up. You guys can do it. We need four. So if you need the, if you need to recruit a fourth one, we can get enough fourth one. I don't know. Um, need a fourth person here. One of you guys in the team want to come up and help them, or somebody else? Yeah, you can do it. Come on, all well, you guys. Okay. So you guys get back here. Now, you know, even if you were to try to keep your leg, your knees straight, you can come join me at this. Try to make your knees a 90 degrees, 90 degree angle and not fall over. They're all the way down to 90 degree angle and not fall over. And keep your back at a 90 degree angle. You can't really do it for more than a few seconds because it gets just you can't do it. Try it. Try doing a 90 degree angle like back you a human and your knees. So now you have to get down and you know, try to get with a 90 degree angle here, 90 degree angle here. All oh, my knees are kill me. Uh, you really can't do it for more than a few seconds if you can do it at all. Because um, our bodies aren't built that way. Uh, but now you have to actually do worse than that. You do a 90 degree angle with your knees and you have to go perpendicular to the ground. But you can only do that, you can't do it by yourself. That's impossible. 
but you can do it as a team by putting your shoulders or neck or shoulders on somebody else's knees, have the other person put theirs on your knee, somebody else on their knees, and so you can do something you can't possibly do by yourself as a team. So each one of you will start off, just kind of get down where you're supposed to be, one person here, one here, one here, one here, and then get your, uh, you know, you can start with the first person, get your shoulders on somebody else's knees, and then you raise up and, and make this uh, happen. You understand? Okay, so. Okay, so if you're going to be, okay, okay yeah, you're going to lay down on your knees, so he's going to lay down on your knees. Yeah, that's right. Exactly. So you're going to kind of get down like that, get started, and then put yourself in a position, and then, then eventually lift up your hands. Sleep at my crotch. You okay? Oh my god. Yeah. Uh, waiting for you. Just sleep. One. Two, three, up. There, we're having. Put it on top. Yes. Need trust. What center do you need trust? <laughs> we rest on the leg first, and after that, we you have to ultimately lift up your hands. When you're done, your hands go straight up in the air. Yeah. Stop making good stuff. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. So when you're in position, lift okay. up your hands. Your, your abs must be lift up as well. Okay. 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 Hands up. Oh. Once you once you're in position. Okay. Now. Oh my God. <laughs> if you really get in position right, you can actually stay there an hour. They were. Still struggling with it. We have to practice a little bit. Yeah. But, well, that's okay. That's good stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. They did something you can't do by yourself. Um, like I said, I can't get my my legs in a 90 degree angle, let alone all the way back. My legs in a 90 degree angle. It's impossible. Um, but together, we can do stuff we can't do separately. <laughs> Let's go ahead and we'll listen to this uh, video here. I'm going to pause the uh, my video.